Well, where do we search for heroic figures in Canadian history? The perennial favorite is the soldier, but in true Canadian fashion, we have not tended to lionize individuals, but rather the men who died in droves in the trenches, who liberated occupied countries, who made the world safe for democracy. But how do we come up with individual heroes we can call our own? On that score, his Canadian historians have generally come up short. Not only are we boring, but the overriding drift in historiography over the past uh, half century or so has not been conducive to myth-making, to the celebration of an individual lives. The stress has been on social history. As a result, professional historians have largely left a vacuum for popularizers of history, and this controversially is where Riel has come in. I want to talk about the recently, uh, the recent televised retrial of Louis Riel, not so much in regard to what was said in the programs, since three of the people directly involved are uh, present on the panel. Rather, what I want to do is talk about the exercise and the objections it raised in broader terms as a skirmish in the ongoing battles over Riel, his past, and his place in the future. Uh, let me illustrate this uh, through the text in one of the 25 bills, motions, and petitions designed to pardon or exonerate Riel that have been tabled in Parliament and the Senate over the past 30 years. For example, NDP member Simon de Jong's speech in 1980 included two as yet unfulfilled wishes. First, he said, that this House do justice to Louis Riel and to all Métis throughout Canada by granting him a posthumous pardon. And the second wish was that thereby it would settle the matter once and for all. In fact, as I suggest, the first wish is much more likely to come true than the second. Perhaps the only body that wants to settle the matter of Riel's stature in Canadian history once and for all is the federal government which has never sponsored a government bill in favor of pardoning, but which has recently said apologetic and even laudatory things about Riel. For instance, as many of you will no doubt know, the unanimous resolution of Parliament in 1992 recognized the rebellion, as they put it, as a movement for democratic rights. So as the uh, Prime Minister of the time, Joe Clark, read out, Riel, quote, paid with his life for his leadership in a movement which fought for the maintenance of the rights and freedoms of the Métis people. In 1998, under the title Learning from the Past, the federal government's statement of reconciliation with Aboriginal people included a remark that no progress could be made, quote, without reference to the sad events culminating in the death of Métis leader, leader Louis Riel. The statement ended by saying that the government would look for ways to reflect Louis Riel's proper place in history. Well, notably, the statement stopped short at defining what would be proper. It seems that the way that the government would prefer to fix Riel's meaning is by feeling sorry. They can't even bring themselves to say he was executed. And this wishy-washiness does not characterize most Canadians' impressions of Riel. For those who think Riel was a traitor and deservedly executed, the matter was settled 118 years ago. And these people came out of the woodwork after the televised retrial and the landslide vote for acquittal uh, induced calls that this was revisionist history, that it was an attempt to rewrite what had already indeed been, been settled. In contrast, of course, those who consider Riel a martyred hero and a visionary leader don't require a government apology or a pardon bill to confirm their impressions. Well, where do historians come in? Very few of us have participated in this latest round of debates, which is ironic since everyone else seems to be talking about the politics of history generally through the specifics of Riel's commemoration. And when Paul Chartrand asked me to say a few words on the subject uh, to start us off this evening, uh, he asked me to assume the role of, I believe you might have said, disinterested and objective historian. Undoubtedly, I will have failed. Uh, for me, such a brief is like mapping the prairie with the grid lines that Leanne Lirondel talked about. 
while somehow ignoring the undulations of politics. And I had this impression very strongly as I was flying in on a very clear day and seeing those rigid uh, lines, which for historians would be name, date, name, date. Well, we can set down some certainties of names and dates concerning Rio, but I doubt that straight lines will ever be drawn through this historical figure. He cannot be flattened out. And if we continue to debate the trial of Socrates 2,000 years on, there is no reason to assume that posthumous pardons, internet polls, or even boring historians will end the debate over Riel's meanings in the 21st century. Thank you.